Sotheby's, Christie's and Phillips wrapped up their contemporary art evening sales this week in London and there were plenty of surprises as some newer names became star sellers and many star artists didn't meet expectations. Joining us now from Berlin to tell us all the details is WSJ art reporter Mary Lane. Mary, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. So Mary, despite the hot contemporary art market, it seems just being a big name is not quite enough. Mediocre work from star artists didn't do so well? They didn't, but that's actually a good thing, the dealers and specialists say, because you know what we saw with the 2008 crash was that people were going after any work by a big artist, no matter what kind of work it was, and that just created these bubbles. So this time around, you know, both of the houses, their top lots came from an artist, Francis Bacon, but a, a drabber bacon that was in the in the auctions that was all gray, for example, didn't sell. And Gerhard Richter, who's also very popular, did well with his better, more colorful, dynamic works, but he also had a almost completely gray work that, that didn't sell. And, and you know, dealers are actually really saying this is very stable for the market. Well. I mean, he's certainly still very hot at the top end, correct? That three studies for portrait of George Dyer that we just saw there, that went for what, 45 million? It did, yes. Um, you know, Bacon had the most expensive work overall, and you know, there was a work at each house that was most expensive for his. Um, Christie sold a very nice one from the collection of Roald Dahl, the children's author who wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, mm -hmm. and he's doing very well. I mean, he is the most expensive artist at auction ever, you know, with the 142 million record set in November. Sure, and how did the Richter Tapestry do? I know there was a lot of buzz about that. There was a lot of us, and you know he doesn't make that many tapestries. Most of what he's known for is the squeegee paintings and the photorealist paintings, but he did make a few, and several of them sold at Gagosian um, a bit back. And Sotheby's really worked at, at marketing that tapestry, and it ended up selling for one point five million dollars. So it was quite a success for them. Now let's talk a little bit about the records set for some of the younger artists: Tracy Emin, David Ostrowski. How did they do? Well, Tracy is actually, it's very surprising because it, it often seems to the market like she is young, but she is in fact um, 50. But she's really been ignored by the market. They haven't taken her very seriously. And this time around, her 1998 work, My Bed, which she submitted for the Turner Prize, was actually snatched up for about $4 million. And that was, you know, quite a controversial work when it came out, but it's really, her market's really taking up steam. And then, you know, you see someone like David Ostrowski, who was born in 1981, very young. His work at the primary market, he just had a show here in Berlin for $50,000 per work. But, you know, he really got picked up by um, Phillips a few months ago, and he just set a new record there last night for $292,000. So he is really picking up speed, 97% increase in the past four months. And, you know, we're going to have to see if he can hold that. Yeah, and some other artists we're talking about, Adrian Gini and the fake Rothko, how did that do? Yeah, that was a really great work. Uh, we profiled Adrian in the paper actually before he ever even took off. And he's managed by a gallery called Pace. And they also managed Rakeeb Shaw, who did very well at the Sotheby sale. And they've been very, you know, aggressive about making sure that his work is well known in every market, even though uh, Rakeeb is Indian and uh, Adrian is Romanian. So sometimes those countries get overlooked. And as a result, a lot of people couldn't buy his work directly from the galleries, but they were clamoring for more. So what ended up happening was Gini uh, sold a $2.4 million picture. It's him painting a fake Rothko in his, <laughs> in his studio. It's a joke. But it um, really just smashed his last record, which was set exactly a year ago for $332,000. You know, it was really quite a runaway hit. And, and what were the total sales for the houses? Christie's came out ahead, is that right? Christie's came out ahead. Sotheby's had 158 million, and they set a one record, world record, um, that was for a Peter Doig, and that was their major one. But in, then 24 hours later, Christie's actually broke it, and they had um, seven major records uh, total, and they had a sale title, so sold totals of 170 million. So, so things are just, still very rosy for the contemporary art market. Yeah. Mary, thank you so much for that.